Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs and for this review, we are looking at the SH Figure Arts Son Goku Kaioken or Goku after he's done Kaioken. And this is one where some people are like, this is something we very much needed. And others were like, we just got one not that long ago. Why does this exist? Well, it's definitely different from the previous version. We're gonna compare the two. We're gonna compare this up against some plain versions of Goku. We're gonna talk about all of the features of this figure. Most of them, pretty good. Couple things that maybe could be a little bit better, but all in all, it's, it's a fairly solid figure. So. It's a good thing, but uh, definitely a few things to talk about. So let's go ahead, get him off the stand, and take a closer look. This guy stands roughly about, let's say 15 centimeters to the top of his head. That's generous. More like 14, I guess 14 to the top of his head, and about 16 and a half to the top of his hair. Of course, that's all just estimations because depending on how you pose the head, it's going to be a little bit different, but that'll give you a good enough idea. And that's about, let's say, five and a half to the top of the head and closer to six and a half for the hair. Uh, so, you know, it's your average. In fact, it is essentially the exact same figure that we have here, just with different colors, okay? So that's our standard modern release Goku figure. Same exact figure, essentially, other than the paint for all intents and purposes. Now, before we get into any of the specifics, let's just do another quick comparison with this guy. This is the previous release of, let me adjust the camera a little bit. Previous release of a Kaioken Goku, which is not necessarily everyone's favorite interpretation. I think it's good enough for what it was, and it does have some things about it that I still kind of like. It definitely errs on the side of not using a lot of saturation as opposed to using more. So that's definitely an issue. I think my favorite thing about this figure is the way they handled the face and the hair. Uh, definitely could use a little bit more red tone to it, but I think the face and hair do look really nice on the original release. Um, I also like the way they went with more of a black and red look rather than the purpley color of the new one. You know, that's gonna come down to personal preference. Different instances do make him look different in certain parts of the anime and maybe the manga. I can't speak to the manga that much. I will say this guy, even though I do like the overall aesthetic here, he does seem to be maybe a touch, just a touch too purple. And they do often go with a purpley, not quite red look for the Kaioken. And so this isn't very far off at all, if at all, but maybe just a touch, maybe for like the hair, things like that. But as you can see, this guy's very metallic. He's very pearly looking, and it does make him look like he's lit up, which I think is an excellent way to portray this, this version of the character. Very nicely done, I think. And uh, just in case you're curious, here he is up against the other figure, which may end up getting a Kaioken version. That's the new uh, Dragon Ball Super Goku, and here he is here. Some of the same parts, not all of the same parts, but still. Give or take this guy, the uh, super version of Goku is similar to the plain old version. So anyway, uh, last thing to mention on this guy in terms of aesthetics that's really worth pointing out is people don't seem to like the fact that he's got this kanji instead of the um, turtle kanji. This is what he had on when he was fighting Turles and also when he was fighting uh, Ginyu, if memory serves. And he went Kaioken in both of those fights. So that's perfectly okay. It's not the version of him when he was fighting Vegeta. I think maybe that's why people like that version. That would be cool. But this is definitely an accurate portrayal. So there's nothing wrong there. It's just a personal preference type thing. And I'm, I'm okay with it. Otherwise, this guy is gorgeous. The paints are clean as heck. Everything is really nice. The only downside, the only negative thing I can find about this guy aesthetically, other than I think his face would look better if it looked more like this one, but again, that's mostly personal preference. You can just see different styles there. The only thing that really stands out to me, the backs of the knees are not quite the right color. That's it, that's the, just the backs of the knees. That's not that big of a deal. Doesn't really bother me, but it is worth noting you do see some different colors there. But otherwise, this guy is just gorgeous. So shiny, the pearl that they used, oh man, it just is exactly what it should be. It looks fantastic. I'm gonna give it a nine out of 10 for aesthetics. Now, when we get into the accessories, we're a little bit shy on a lot. <laughs> we don't get a ton here, which is unfortunate. But we do have both heads. We have the hair that's kind of down and normal looking, and then we have the spiked up hair. The spiked up hair is the style where they put a lot of lines in it, as opposed to not having a lot of lines in it, sculpt-wise. Not my personal preference, but it is perfectly reasonable to do it that way, so that's fine. So we have both heads or hairs, and then we have three different faces. We have a kind of normal face, one where his teeth are showing, and then one where he's yelling. They're all done really well. 
uh, on their own, they're fine. I do personally prefer the older styling, but these are still excellent on their own, so that's good. And then for hands, we have two fist hands, two kind of grapply hands, and then two martial arts hands. And that is it. He's very light on accessories. Now, he wasn't very expensive, so I don't think that's a problem, but mower is better when it comes to accessories. So a stand would have been nice. Uh, this, something like this would have been nice. That's the one that came with the uh, original release and the colors match wonderfully on this guy. So yeah, I don't think it would have cost them all that much to include those. Kick up the price 10 bucks and I think we would have been in business, but we didn't get that. So accessories, I'm only gonna give it a seven. It's not a problem, but we definitely could have had a few more accessories. So, oh, by the way, I should probably mention my hand looks like I've been mauled by a dog because I was working on my car and I have very big hands and cars have small tight places. So I apologize for that. I couldn't just wrap my hand in bandages. That would look weird. So you're gonna have to deal with that. Anyway, as far as the articulation goes, there's really no need for me to go over it, but I will. It's all standard for the most part. Uh, we've seen this all particular before, but that's okay. We have our little tiny ball hinge up here, still not a double ball peg. It'll get the job done. It's definitely not the best. The neck is on a ball peg. It doesn't move a ton, but it does move, so that is okay. You're probably wondering, can we swap this head with this head? And I thought I would wait to find out with you. I don't think it's gonna work, because oftentimes these don't swap out well with the more modern releases, but let's find out if it does. It might. It does sometimes work. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it works pretty well. Colors don't quite match. It sits a little bit higher, but if you really wanted to use the older look, you could get away with that for sure. If you didn't have it to compare against, you wouldn't you wouldn't think anything of it because he does have enough shading by the back part of his face. It looks fine. So you could definitely get away with using the older head. Now I know what you're thinking. Can we switch out the face plates? I haven't done that yet either. <laughs> Let's just do it. Let's just do it. It's fine. We're in the articulation section and we're doing accessories, but hey, sometimes you just gotta make lemonade, right? Pop that out. I, sometimes these work no problem. I don't think this one fits exactly. Yeah, it doesn't fit exactly. So can we make it work? Uh, eh, no, not really. It doesn't quite fit. There's gapping and stuff. So no, the face plates don't swap. Heads do swap. That's good to know, I think. You guys ask me those kind of questions a lot. I try to cover any ones that I can anticipate, but sometimes, you know, some people just ask some out of the, out of left field questions. Okay, so that's what we have. Heads can swap, faces cannot. All right, shoulders have a ball peg that connects them into a butterfly joint, which is flesh toned. I hate that, I hate that so much. I hate that so much. There shouldn't be flesh tone in there. There's no reason for that to be. The whole shoulder socket should just be, just be clothing colored. You don't need that because you have the sleeve out here. So as long as the sleeve is able to separate from that, it needs to all be one color. Making the flesh tone in there is it, it's terribly distracting. So that's a bummer, but we do get a butterfly joint. It's somewhat usable. It's not the greatest, but it does exist, so that's okay. Like I said, we have the ball peg, then we have our ball hinge. Can't raise the arm up too far vertically. That's pretty much standard though. And this guy's on a ball peg to move it around. I still think we these new molds are pretty much on point. The only thing we really need uh, going forward, I think, would be to connect the sleeves to the body like they do with the figure eyes kits. Let the sleeve rotate in the body, move the arm separately, and that would be perfect. Having this split here is just so dated. They need to move from, away from that. But you do get good enough range. I mean, you'll be able to pose this guy just fine. You'll have few slight posing issues as you pose him, but otherwise you'll be okay. So there's your swivel. Double jointed elbow works just fine. Wrists are on a tiny little ball hinge. Tiny little ball hinge, just like the neck. Not the most effective, but they get the job done. For our torso, we have a hinge and a ball peg and another ball peg, so you can lift it up and lean him forward and stuff. Now do keep in mind, this guy is far more painted than most figures. Like this guy, for instance, virtually no paint on him. This guy, for instance, virtually no paint on him. This guy, for instance, paint out the wazoo. And so these kind of parts will grind against each other and you'll have some issues. You can see mine right on that abdominal section. This is fresh out of the box. I haven't posed him around at all. Mine already has a few issues, so do be aware of that. You may find one that doesn't have it, but do expect that. Uh, as you pose him, especially on that hinge, you could get some scuffing on that paint. But if you don't mess with it, you won't. But you do get decent enough range out of it, full rotation. Well, I guess it's not full. Enough rotation. If you force it, you'll get even more, but again, 
everything is painted on here, so be very careful. The belt does rotate and it's floaty, but again, everything is painted. Be careful as you're posing this guy. Uh, hips are same as before. This one likes to tuck under the cap and it works pretty well. This one, this one wants to fight me and I don't want to force it. So that technically counts as limitation. I can't get the legs to work that well out to the side with this guy, overall at least, and it does scare me to do that. Moving them forward, plenty of range. Moving them back, plenty of range. No issues there, that's all good. And then, of course, you have your thigh swivel, which is fine. So it's fine, but again, the parts like the hips and the torso where you have painted it parts rubbing against each other, be very careful. Please be careful with your figures. For the knees, it's the same semi-ugly knees that aren't great. You can see that wrong color in there peeking through, but since you do have a kneecap on there, it's not terrible. Could be better, but you do get decent enough range, and they're not the ugliest knees we've had. Still a long way to go. We need to fix the knees and shoulders on these guys. And speaking of things we need to fix, the ankles seem to be slightly different. It looks to me like they extended the ball peg a little bit to give us better range. It's a double ball peg, and you can get the range technically, but it does create gapping, and it's just not the best way to do a double ball peg for an ankle. You get enough posability that you should be okay, but you do have gapping all the time. So be aware of that. And you have a toe hinge, which is decent. Not a bad toe hinge. Let's check the ankle on the other one. Nah, he had long ankles too, so it's the same. It's just not the greatest design. They could do better. But, I mean, that's still, on a figure art scale, they could do a lot better. It's still better than 95% of other figures released, so I think that's okay. So articulation on this guy, while there are a few things that even on these newer molds are starting to be a bit dated, I think they're still doing a pretty darn good job. So I'm going to give it an 8 for articulation. You're not going to have trouble other than to be careful around these parts that have hinges and ball pegs and like to grind against each other. But like I said, this is all scaled for what we're reviewing, so keep that in mind. Alright, so final verdict on this guy. It's a really strong release. If you wanted a Kaioken Goku, you don't have this one or you don't like this one, or you want one that's not on the old ass body with the shoulder shelves and the funny knees, which I think are better now than we maybe gave him credit for in the past. This is definitely a great way to go. Interesting, I think, to note is that this guy does have the styling of the Dragon Ball Super um, artwork, much like the other figures that were built on this body first, but he is based on the earlier versions of Goku where he's fighting Turles or uh, Ginyu. Was it Ginyu? I think it was Ginyu. I think it was Ginyu. Anyway, um, that doesn't bother me. It's still a really solid figure, and if you're looking for a Kaioken Goku, this is the one I would go with. It is overall a nicer figure than the original release. Pick up one of these on eBay or something, or if you already have it, use it, and then you'll be set. But uh, it's a very strong release. I'm going to give it a final verdict of 8 out of 10. Definitely could use more accessories. Definitely could use a little bit of updating here and there, but still, definitely a good release. Anybody who's collecting the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball figures, you should add this to your collection, for sure. It's definitely cheap enough that even if you're thinking about it, just get it. Just get it. You're going to appreciate it, and it's not going to go down in value. So you're going to do yourself a favor, I think. And anybody who just maybe collects cool things, but you're not really into Dragon Ball, if you don't mind having a metallic pink and purple one, then this is the way to go. It's, it's a really, really good release. Otherwise, this is probably the way to go. But as you can see, same figure. Maybe get one of each. That's what I would do. So yeah, that's enough rambling. It's a really good release, and you should get it. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And if you haven't subscribed, do it, because I do have new videos almost every single day. And for the days I don't, I have thousands and thousands of videos already on the channel just waiting to save you money or help you to make an informed buying decision. So check out all that good stuff. And in the meantime, keep collecting.